Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a horizontal box and whisker plot in Microsoft Excel. Now vertical box and whiskers are easier to create and I've got a video linked up in the top corner here for creating them. But for this one we're going to do a horizontal one, an entirely different process and just a little bit more complicated. Now for my data I've got delivery times in days. I'm going to need five values and you're going to need these same values minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3 and maximum. I'm just going to use the quartile ink functions here because they're a bit easier. I'm going to choose quartile ink. I'm going to select my data. I'm going to type a comma and for the minimum value I'm just going to type zero and then press enter. Now I'm going back to my function here and I'm just going to click on each of these values here and press F4. The reason for this is that when I press enter to enter that function I can now copy it down and the range for my data isn't going to change. Of course I'm going to get the exact same values for each but I just need to come in and change this argument, the last value here, to the appropriate number and for quartile 2 that is the number 2, for quartile 3 that's the number 3 and for the maximum it's actually quartile 4 so we're just going to type in the number 4. So now we have the minimum value in our set, the Q1, Q2 or median value, the Q3 and the maximum. Now we need the differences so I'm just going to type the equal sign and just pick up my minimum and now the difference between Q1 and the minimum is an equal sign and it is this value 3 minus the value in this cell. You should build these up with formulas just in case you change your data because you want the changes to flow through. Now that we've got this value or this calculation here we can just copy it down. You can't copy the first one, you can copy the others. So we now have all the data that we need for our plot. We're going to select over this data here, the differences are what we're going to plot. We're going into insert, we're going to our charts here and we're going to select this 2D bar which is a stacked bar. Don't choose this one, that's not the one we're using, it's this middle one here. Click on it and don't panic <laughs> because this is not the way around we want our data. But because we have our chart selected and chart design selected up here, we just need to switch the rows and columns. So now we've got the beginning of our box and whisker. Now this area here is the distance between 0 and the minimum value so we don't want that to show at all. So we're going to right click and choose Format Data Series and from the fill area here we're going to select no fill. Now for the orange area here that is the difference from the minimum to Q1 and we don't want to show that either so we're going to do no fill on that and for this area here which is the distance from Q3 to maximum we don't want to see that either because we want to add bars for those. So we've got the area that we actually want to plot selected here. Now let's just click in here which is where we had this series. You can see that when I click here we're selecting this. You don't want this one don't select that, you want this one here. So with it selected you're going up to the chart design tab, add chart element, you're going to click on this and go to error bars and more error bars options. For this error bar we want it to have a sort of vertical line here and be attached to our chart. So this is the one we want, we want a minus error bar. And then for the error mark we're going to custom and we're going to click here and for the negative value we're going to remove what's in the negative box here, it's got to be the negative box and we're going to click on this second calculation, the distance between minimum and Q1. So click on that and click OK and so now we've got the error bar on this side of the chart. Now we're going to select on this element here which is the rightmost part of our plot. Again add chart element error bars more error bars options. In this case we want it to be a plus so we're going to click on plus and you can see it's already attached to the correct area of our chart but the amount of the error is going to be a custom value so we're going to click in this box and this time it's a positive because it's going on the other end of the chart, the right hand side of the chart so we're going to remove what was in there, click on this and go and select this value here. And we'll come back in here 
click the down pointing arrow and click OK. So let's just check our chart. The minimum value here is 1 and you can see here that this is the minimum value. The Q1 or 25th percentile is at 3 and you can see here it's at 3. The median value on our chart is 4 and here it is in our calculations. And then Q3 or the 75th percentile is at 5 and that's what's showing in our data. And then the maximum value is at 11 and here it is at 11. Now we can change these error bars around. I'm just clicking on this error bar. I'm going to the fill options and I'm going to make it a little bit wider. I'm going to do the same for this error bar and of course we could change its colour and other things as well. We can add a chart title but we can also add some more grid lines. I've got my grid line selected here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose format axis because it's actually the axis not the grid lines that I want to format here. And what I've got is major units are two. I'm going to make them one. So now we have lines for every single one of the values in our axis. Just going to close that down. I'll remove my chart title but of course I could just replace that with a chart title. But there is our horizontal box and whisker plot for the data that we have here. We're actually plotting the differences but when we go to read our chart we're actually using the calculation values to read off the chart because that's an actual fact what the chart is showing us. You can see here that I've actually got one for my series here. I can just remove that. Don't have to have a axis value there. It doesn't make any sense at all. So I hope that helps you with a somewhat different, maybe a little bit confusing process for creating horizontal box and whisker plots in Microsoft Excel. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.